So let's talk about Ohm's Law. Now, what is Ohm's Law? Well, Ohm's Law gives us a concrete relationship between potential difference and current flow. So how does it do this? Well, we've got a basic relationship that's satisfied by all materials that are so-called ohmic materials. And this relationship tells us that the current density, which is current divided by area, is equal to the conductivity, which depends only on the material. So copper has a conductivity, silver has a conductivity, whatever, times the electric field. So when I apply an electric field, I multiply by the conductivity and that tells me how much current flows. Now a good conductor has a really, really, really big conductivity. And that means that even a tiny electric field will make lots of current density flow. All right. Now, let's try to turn this into something that's associated with the current rather than the current density and something that's associated with the potential difference rather than the electric field. Because these are the things that we have easy access to measure, current and potential difference. We don't want to measure current density and electric field because they're more annoying. All right, so let's take a wire like this. He's got a cross-sectional area a, and we're going to apply an electric field across him. Now, we're going to consider a length L of this wire. Okay. The potential difference across this wire is given by negative electric field times length. And that's just like the work relationship, work equal force dot displacement, and then potential energy equals, or change of potential energy, equals minus the work. So that's where this minus sign comes from. All right, so we can solve this for the electric field and then plug that into this ohmic relationship. And that gives us J equals minus sigma times delta V over L. Now we're gonna solve this for delta V and that'll give us delta V equals minus J divided by sigma times L. All right, now remember that the current density was current divided by area. So if I plug that in, I'll get minus current and then times this little one over sigma times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. All right, that looks annoying. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it R, the resistance. All right, let's go on over here. So the resistance is equal to one over sigma, one over the conductivity, that's called the resistivity, all right, times the length of wire divided by the cross-sectional area. Now the nice thing about this is that this resistivity depends only on the material. It doesn't depend on how big the wire is or how long it is or all the geometrical properties of the wire. It only depends on what it's made of. All right, so what that means is that if I've got a thick wire with a large cross-sectional area, then that'll give me a really small resistance. If I've got a long wire, it's really long, then that'll give me a large resistance. Okay, we can again think about this in terms of traffic. Thick wire, that's like many lanes of traffic. So that's going to be easier for people to drive down it. Long wire, that's like really long road, less people are gonna choose that option. All right, so let's do some problems. Oh, we've got delta V equals minus IR. This is what people usually are referring to when they say Ohm's law. Change, the potential difference equals minus IR. So what does this minus sign mean? Well, the minus sign means that the current flows in the direction of decreasing potential. So if I go across a resistor in the direction of the current, then that means that the potential is decreasing. So the change of potential will be negative. All right, let's do some problems. So what is the potential difference across a three ohm resistor that carries four amps of current? All right, Ohm's law directly. Potential difference, equal minus IR, equal minus, what's the current? Four amps. 
What's the resistance? 3 ohms. So it'll be 12 volts. Notice I don't have to worry about the units because everything's in SI units. So that means it's a potential difference, it's volts. Done. All right, determine the current in a 5 ohm resistor with a 30 volt potential difference maintained across it. All right, now I want the current. So I'm gonna start again with Ohm's law. Delta V equal IR. I'm not worried about the minus sign. Well, I'll put it there, but it doesn't really matter as far as what this is concerned with. All right, so we'll say 30 volts equals minus I times resistance, five ohms. So that means the current must be equal to six amps. Again, the minus sign's kind of annoying. Really, I should have a minus sign there, but whatever. I just want to know what's the current, right? The minus sign tells me what direction the current's going in, and it doesn't ask me that. All right, number three, what is the resistance of a resistor that carries a current of 18 amps when a 36 volt potential difference is maintained across it or imposed across it? All right, once again, Ohm's law, delta V equal I R, where I'm just going to ignore the minus sign this time. All right, delta V is 36, I, 18, R. So I'll divide, and the resistance will be 2 ohms. Notice that I even left the units out this time. Basically, you really need to give units in the answer. Whether or not you give units when you're doing the algebra, that depends on your teacher. Some teachers want you to write units everywhere, and if your teacher wants you to do it, you got to do that. But the important thing is to make sure that you always have a unit in your answer. All right, that's Ohm's Law.